Good morning. This is Nancy from Chu Baldwin Homes at Keller Williams NJ Metro Group. We have been having a heck of a time trying to win buyer offers right now. And if you're a buyer, I'm sure you have been feeling it as you're out there. I've, I'm hearing about people making two, three, five, seven, eight offers and still not getting the house. So I wanted to share with you guys a couple of the tools and tips and tricks of the trade that Shoe Baldwin Homes has been using to win offers as quickly as they possibly can. Okay. So um, I'm just going to start rattling off a list and uh, <laughs> hopefully this will help you guys and you guys can go and then speak with your real estate agents and say, hey, can you use, you know, can we discuss some of these tools? Okay. Um, listen, first of all, the most effective tool that I have been feeling is just getting into a really strong rapport relationship with the listing agent as fast as possible. Have your agent reach out to the other agent and develop some sort of relationship. Okay. Um, I'll be honest, as a listing agent, I really love that because I feel like the buyer's agent is really listening and um, taking in and understanding what it is that our sellers might need. It's respectful, it's kind, it's not pushy, and usually um, it, I, I feel better if there's a bit of a rapport, okay? Um, so please feel free to do that. Also, please encourage your agent when they're putting together their packages to make it look as professional as possible, okay? Really strong cover sheets, um, professional looking, you know, um, contracts that are not scrawled in, you know, with like you know, crayon, <laughs> you know, um, and really putting it all together in one PDF is really useful to us from a listing agent side. Okay. Um, listen, there's other tools that you can use. You could reach out to the mortgage person and have your mortgage person call the listing agent. That's a great thing because the, the mortgage the, the mortgage person can then tell um, the listing agent how incredibly um, strong your client is, how strong you are as a buyer, and how serious they are about being able to get you through the mortgage process. I was going to say, sometimes I've heard of people saying that they're having their brokers, you know, um, from their office reach out and uh, call a listing agent and support uh, and support your particular offer as well. Okay. Don't forget, when you are being called in for a best and final offer, please use your best and final number and your best and final terms and contingencies, okay? Like the, your best and final terms are very important because if you pull your punches and then you miss that opportunity on that best and final, most sellers and listing agents don't really look back. If you come back and, and say, oh, that wasn't our best and final, they don't always look favorably upon that because then they think, hmm, you know, you didn't follow directions the first time, okay? Speaking of following directions, it is very important that you follow directions. Many listing agents will publish their actual offer instructions. Please, please, please make sure your agent is following those instructions because when they don't follow the instructions, it doesn't make the listing agent happy. And it certainly makes us, you know, doesn't really make the seller happy either. Okay. Um, I will tell you that uh, it, I think you should push for your offers, even if they are not accepted, please push them to be backup offers. You know, I think in a very heated market like this, you can often, unfortunately, lose your first offer. And if your first offer goes down the drain, then you are the backup. It would be fantastic because, they, you know, a week later, they might come back to you and say, hey, do you still want this house? And that would be fantastic because um, that way, push to be a backup offer. Um, I will tell you some of the most important things, of course, there's some of this stuff is like be flexible on your closing date, etc. None of this is particularly challenging, but some of the most effective tools could be providing an appraisal floor. So that is basically the buyer saying, listen, I understand that the number I'm giving you might be pushing it into a place where it cannot actually appraise from a bank appraisal perspective. And what we're telling you is that we're willing to bring cash on top in order to make up for that potential gap, in order to make up for that potential appraisal shortfall. And if that is the case, and if you're interested in doing that, you have to provide proof of funds. And the proof of funds has to cover the actual cash amount, 
that you're, you know, that you're providing for shortfall. And of course, whatever deposit money and um, closing costs that you, uh, that you have to provide. Okay. So an appraisal floor um, and waiver is a really important thing. Okay. Um, another thing that is super useful right now is a inspection remediation waiver. That is basically a buyer saying to a seller, yes, we understand that the house is being sold as is. And while we may choose to do a home inspection, it's going to be for our informational purposes only. And we are not going to go after you for any repairs. That remediation waiver is probably one of the most important things because sellers are not looking to renegotiate again after you get the house. So they're just this way it takes that sort of whole haggling process out and sellers are definitely favoring those types of um, offers. Okay. Last but not least, one of the most important things that we've been coming across is sellers are looking for that kind of flexibility and the offering of a potential use and occupancy. Okay. That is basically the buyer saying, Hey, listen, we need to close by May 15th. But we understand that you might have a hard time getting out of the house before May 30th. How about we offer you a use and occupancy? How about we charge you a dollar a day for it? Okay, which is basically you saying live for practically free for a couple of weeks in the house after we close on it. Because we understand that that will make your life easier so that, A, you don't have to move twice. You don't have to put everything in storage while you're waiting for your house to be ready. Um, it's a very, very powerful tool, and most mortgage companies will allow you to do a use and occupancy to, for up to 59 days because after 59 days, you know, you really have to move in. So, <laughs> But it's a very powerful tool, and it gives sellers a real peace of mind that they're not going to be homeless for any period of time. OK, so th these are some of the tools that you could be using as a buyer right now. Um, please feel free to share them with your agent so that your agent um, can utilize them to help you win. And of course, as always, if you have any further questions, you can come to us. Nancy, 917-992-3098. We're always happy to help buyers. I'll see you guys next week.